Sadhguru, Dhyanalinga is also a technology of transformation. What kind of technology is that? See, uh, there are various kinds of energies. Because at some point you said time and space, I didn't want to pick on you, I just left it because... Uh, <laughs> see, when you said time and space, you said space and time or... Time, time, and space. time and space. In yoga, there is no time and space, there's only time and time. There is one level of time which is called Mahakala, another level of time which is Kala. Right now, the way you know time is only by the cyclical moments of physical objects. Planet spins a day, Moon goes around a month, this happens uh, one hour, dial goes around once, it's one hour. Everything is by circular moment. Everything that's physical is in circular moment. From atomic structure to the galaxies, everything that is physical in nature is naturally moving in circles. This circular moment we call as samsara. Samsara does not mean family. Samsara means cyclical moment. Cyclical moment means what? If I say you're going in circles, what does it mean? You don't know where you're, you're not going anywhere. Not that you don't know where you're going, you're not going anywhere, isn't it? You're going round and round means you're not going anywhere. Everything that's physical is going round and round because it's not going anywhere. That includes you, that includes me as a physical person, that includes everything. It's going round and round. When this round and round action ceases, it'll cease. Now we are trying to find that out through all kinds of experiments on atoms and neutrons. If this happens, what will happen? This is what will happen. If the circular moment stops, physical existence will cease. This is all the time happening in the existence. Many, many, many uh, whatever… Galaxies. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm not going that far. I'm saying uh, many, many zillions of atoms which were here in this universe some time ago are not there anymore. They did not go anywhere. They just stopped the moment and became non-existent. This is what we are calling as Mahasamadhi. This is what we are calling as muks Mukti, Moksha, Nirvana, Nirvikalpa. All this, we stopped the circular moment. So they've always been telling you from samsara, you must move to sannyasa. People are thinking from family, I must become a monk. No, no, no. From circular moment of life, you… Stillness. Yes. That is the fundamental. So there is only time. And when time was there, see the word kala means time. The word kala also means darkness or emptiness. Darkness means where everything is absent including light. That is darkness. Kali means tea, right? So emptiness came and danced and then Kala woke up, things happened. If there was no physical substance, would there be space, I'm asking you? Only because there is physical substance, there is there and here, isn't it? If there is no physical substance, there is no space. So in yoga there is no space, there is only time. Space is an illusion that we are creating. Time is the lap upon which we are all dancing our dance. But this is also in two levels. One is a time which is eternal, which is Mahakala, which is not in circular moment, and a time which is Kala, which is in circular moment, which is a consequence of physical creation. Here there is time and space. But as Mahakala, there is no time and space, there is just time, if you want to call it that. The word, English word time is not fully comprehensive in the context of Kala. It is darkness, it is nothing, it is empty, it is uh, time, it's everything put together because all of them are same things. We're just looking at it different ways. So when Kali came, she's an energy. Is she electrical energy? Is she nuclear energy? Is she electronic energy? Is she this, that? No, she is that kind of energy which is non-particular. 
See, your electrical systems, your electronic systems, your nuclear uh, forces, everything is particular energy. There is some movement of energy, particles which causes this energy. She is non-particular energy. So when that happened, then the movement started, samsara started. This cyclical movement started. Initially, it took the form of an ellipsoid, which we call as the linga. From this, many, many, many manifestations happened for which we are also sitting here, including the chair, you and me, I'm putting all this in one category because existentially it's all the same. It's my idea that I'm sitting on the chair, all right? Suppose this chair was in Australia. Upside down. I may be upside down. Even right now, North, Wales may, North Pole may be down, South Pole may be up, you don't know a damn thing, all right? In terms of our convenience, we made up a few things. So I think I'm sitting on the chair, chair thinks it is sitting on me, it doesn't matter. If the gravity goes away, then we don't know who is sitting on whom, all right? So existentially means that, that fundamental existential is Mahakala. Manifest existential is Kala Kali, where the polarities have come, because of that it's happened. But the most fundamental thing, though there were polarities, still it is non-particular. Only when particles came, then cyclical moment started. Samsara started. Yes. So breaking this samsara is the whole process, does not mean breaking your family is the process. The whole idea of spiritual evolution means you want to go beyond your cycles. So simple ways of breaking cycles, uh, like this, uh, what is this? My, it is uh, 3.30, I've still not, not had my lunch, this is a cycle. Well, here nobody has a lunch in the afternoon. They eat once in the morning, once in the night, some people eat only once. So in some ways you've broken the cycle because your entire system, not today, for thousands of years this system has been designed to this cycle. People eating in a certain way. Now you break that cycle either with through… F because food is very important because it's a fundamental cycle. Your food, your sexuality, your sleep, these are three fundamental cycles which are hardest to break. Every day you are going to school, you want to break the cycle, it's very easy <laughs> But every day you're eating, very difficult, sexuality, very difficult, sleep, even more difficult. Breaking the cycle of sleep is the biggest thing. Today here you see three days if I say there is activity day and night, there's a whole lot of people with just maybe one, one and a half hours of dozing here and there, they will be active throughout the night. Breaking the cycle of sleep is the biggest thing. That you're… if you're insomnia, some other troubles, that's different. You're healthy, you can sleep well, but you don't sleep and you're well. You don't become ill by not sleeping. This is important because you're breaking the fundamentals which many generations of people have built in a way they're trying to determine what you should do with your life, you want to break that. This is why you have read the death book. In India, when we do the karmas and kriyas, it's not just about saying, I love you, daddy, I love you, mummy, it's not about that. We want to distance ourselves from their karma because don't underestimate the dead people, they try to live through you. You must end that cycle. If you don't end that cycle, no new possibility will happen here, you will just be one more same thing. Twentieth… first… twenty-first century, but first century is living in twenty-first century. Repetition. <laughs> so the Dhyana Linga will help us break the cycle. Yes, it is essentially that dimension where Dhyana means you have broken the cycle. Dhyana means this. It is not even about breaking the cycle, distancing yourself. Dhyana means this, if you sit here, your body is here, your mind is out there, what is you is elsewhere. Once this distance arises between you and your body, between you and your mind, this is the end of all cycles because all the cycles are either physiological or psychological. You are available to the cycles of life only through your physiology and only through your psychological framework, isn't it? How compulsively depends from person to person, it varies, but Everybody is available to certain amount of physiological and psychological cycles. If the cycle is running, if your physiological cycle is running for a full 
uh, uh, like a, you know, nearly twelve year cycle which is a solar cycle, if it's running like that, you will be least entangled. If that cycle shrinks to nine years, six years, three years, eighteen months or six months, three months, below three months, you'll be psychologically ill. Yes. So, one dimension of sadhana everybody is doing is to get their cycle to twelve years so that their body is not an impediment. Right now for most human beings, their own body and their own mind are the biggest impediments. They don't need any enemies actually. They're doing great by themselves, this is called a self-help <laughs> Yes, they don't need anybody else to make them suffer. They can sit here and simply suffer by themselves, all right? So if you are suffering your life when you are with me, maybe it's me. If you are suffering when you are alone, you are in bad company <laughs> You are a bad company in your life. That has happened because cycles have shrunk. If you make a twelve-year cycle for your physiological thing, you will see it will allow you a whole amount of latitude. As long as you're in this body, you are subject to cycles. Nobody can escape that because that is the basis of your physical existence. If you break the cycle, you will leave the body. But the best way to be is to align it with the solar cycle, which is the largest cycle in this planetary system. So you maintain that cycle, your body is aligned to that cycle, now you will see the physical and psychological compulsions are at the minimum level. Not entirely gone, you still have to eat, you still have to sleep, but it is at the minimum level where you can decide whether to do it or not, okay? But when it's at a lower level, you cannot decide, it will decide by itself. Cycles will decide by themselves what you do. People's direction of life, if they watch their life, how it's gone, they will see they did not decide a whole lot of things, that's how they will do things. Because the cycles will decide that, that is the samsara. We are essentially talking about breaking away from compulsive cycles and moving into a conscious cycle. Sadhguru, does Bharata, as you said in a book, is this something we have to do more than others? I mean, do we… we are a spiritual laboratory, it is said. This ashram itself, I find… Hey, we are not a laboratory, we are an industry. <laughs> I know that's a negative word because laboratory means still you're not figured out. Industry means you figured out. So we should do something? Of course. As Bharatas? What do you mean? No, as people in this country, do we have a special spiritual responsibility? That was my question. Uh, or not really? Definitely I would say because this is a culture which invested in this dimension for thousands of years. Millions of people for many, many, many generations have invested themselves, which has created a certain level of expertise. But unfortunately, we have not presented this. See, if India has to really rise in the world, the easiest way for us to rise is through our wisdom. Even if you are not enlightened in some sense, even if you don't perceive anything, just the accumulated knowledge is so fantastic. See, right now, let's say you go to uh, either United States or Germany, whatever, not every professor in the college may be a scientist, but there is so much accumulated knowledge, with that itself they become powers. Similarly, here also you yourself may not know anything, but just with accumulated knowledge, you can still excel in the world. Because to function in the world, it is not necessary that you should know. You just acquired something, with that you can function in the world, isn't it? I mean, right now the whole education system is just that. Nobody actually here realizes actually apple falls down. They acquire that knowledge. They do not know the mathematics of the apple falling down and what it is because nobody has figured out what is gravity anyway, all right? Even Isaac Newton did not figure it out, but he saw the… in a certain context. I'm saying you're going through education, school education, why? The accumulated knowledge that is there in the world, you want to acquire it so that you become efficient enough to function in the world. Or in other words, to put it crudely, you become employable. So education that is run for employability 
And education that is run for knowing are two different things. I never believe that entire population will go into knowing business because it's too orderous without results, all right? Results are there, but there's nothing to show anybody. Like I said, I am the same yogi, but they thought I'm lost. <laughs> Recently I wrote… is there the poem, my lost poem here? Poem? No, I'm asking <laughs> if it's there. Sadhguru, while we are waiting, who is Shankar and Pillai? You will have to spend a certain amount of time in front of the mirror to know that. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and unless so your wife is bold enough to tell you when she has to tell you. <laughs> yes, she does it when I stick the band-aid on the mirror. <laughs> Let me… because you brought him in, let me tell you, because we are talking about all these things about carrying karma to the next lifetime and everything. One day, Shankaran Pillai was reading something and uh, uh, he looked up at his wife and asked, What do you think, is there reincarnation? She said, of course. Then she said, what does it mean? That means next time I'll come back as something totally different, that means I may die and come back as a pig? She said, I said you'll come as something totally different <laughs> He's already a pig, so <laughs> Oh, that's… that's amazing. Uh, anyway, please. I just want to ask one final question, not final obviously, but you're very busy and time is running out, but is the world becoming a freer place or a more… Uh, less free place? You know, some people say the authoritarian or the very well-disciplined societies manage the pandemic better. And the chaotic people, you know, both the US in some sense and India, mm. we've had so much infection because we're no, not… No, no, no. Actually, India is doing better than most of the countries right now. But infection is very high, but death is low here, one in ten thousand. Isn't that what we want to achieve? Yeah, okay. Like Did herd you, immunity. No, nobody ever… no… nobody in the right senses ever believed that you're going to damn the virus and make it stay in China or something. That is foolish. Anyway, it's going to spread. Our only problem was, one thing is to arrive at a treatment protocol in time. Another thing is, so that our medical systems don't get overwhelmed and people start dying on the street. Mm -hmm. I think in that sense, India has managed phenomenally well, I would say excellent. For a country of our population and our level of infrastructure, I think we've done a fantastic job of managing this. If you… if you really look at the statistics in every country, per million deaths, we are the lowest. One in ten, yeah. So we've done best, actually. Compared to what kind of infrastructure they have and what we have, and what is the population densities we have? And to communicate anything, you have to say it in twenty-four languages <laughs> Every message has to go in twenty-four languages and there are people who don't understand those twenty-four also. In this country, we have done very, very well. But is the world becoming freer or more authoritarian? Uh, see, uh, people talk about freedom. But when it comes to making choices, they want a strong leader, all right? Because confusion is… causes much more damage than other things. So, if there is a… what to say as the traditional term goes, a benevolent uh, dictator is something that people have always chosen, es chosen especially when there is a crisis because you need somebody who will act strongly at that time. When everything is well, you want a leader that you don't know his name. If somebody asks, well, who is your prime minister, you don't know who he is. That is when everything is running well for us. When things are not going well, we want to know who is the leader and what is he capable of doing. So it depends on which nation you're living, what is the situation. In a country like ours, where still thirty, forty percent of the population is in poverty, malnourished, I think to get our… get us ourselves… get ourselves out of this pit for next twenty-five years, we need strong leadership, strong, painfully strong sometimes. 
Yes, I am not for this as a person, but for me it is good there is no strong leadership because I am in a certain level of life. But I know for the thirty, forty percent of life which is suffering at various levels, physically suffering, mentally suffering is your choice. Physically suffering because of social conditions and economic conditions, a strong leadership is needed to get them out of that pit. After that, you can talk about many egalitarian stuff. This is all when my belly is full, I need one kind of leadership. When I'm hungry, I need another kind of leadership. This is the reality of human societies. Sadhguru, they say that human mm -hmm. population has overrun the planet beyond its carrying capacity. Are we meant to colonize other planets? <laughs> is somebody planning to populate for ten planets? Uh, see, uh, the problem is we've been paying a lot of attention to other planets. If that much attention we had paid to this planet, we would all be living well. Uh, this colonization, Colonialism upon this planet, you know what kind of… Uh, Havoc it created. Yes. You want to do this to other people also, wherever they are? Are there other people around? No, whatever, even if it's land. What colonialism has done to people, other life and land is terrible. No, the idea is human intelligence will go into the other planets and into… See, if you really want to explore outer space, you need to become super conscious. I'm using the word super not in terms of how super consciousness, no. Conscious, I'm saying you must be really conscious. Okay, let me take away the word super. You must be really conscious because if you're conscious, if you become absolutely conscious, there is no space. If you move from what we are referring to as kala to mahakala, then there is no space then what is there is here, what is here is there, then you know it. Now you are anyway talking in terms of millions of light years, all right? With puny uh, satellite, I mean the spaceships that you build, it's okay as an exploration. But you believing that you will go there and transport ev everybody there and live there, all the best. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. <laughs> So this is a poem I wrote just some time ago, it's called My Loss. When I lost all that was me, when I lost all that I had, when the very basis of myself, all thought I had found, and they gathered around me to relish in my loss, to listen to my emptiness, bereft of soul or self, just an echo. So what is finding, what is losing, it's all mixed up in the world, they don't understand one thing from the other because all is… you're always thinking in terms of transaction. Life is a tango, not a transaction. Either you tango well or you do transactions and think you made money, you made profit, you made this, all the best. When I… when you arrange for a container fulls of wealth, to go with your coffin, then I will be there to salute you. <laughs> well, the Egyptians tried that. They had these beautiful tombs and they had all kinds of stuff there. <laughs> all that happened is they got shriveled up. Indians have a better idea. We'll come back with a new body. <laughs> More practical, huh? <laughs> it's not in that context at all, but unfortunately, it's like this, you know, you give a child some building blocks and say, you can build the whole universe with this. You can, maybe on the floor, but it's not going to become a universe. So when the child completes that whatever, he feels elated like he made a new creation. So adults are also in the same condition, but doing a little bigger blocks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. Thank you, Sadhguru. I hope I'm not too abrasive for the no, academic… Oh, no, wonderful. <laughs> that was good. We need to be woken up, Sadhguru.